Hey guys, welcome back to Moe's Game Table. Today we're going to take a look inside Conquering the Valley, Cross Keys, Port Republic. This is a game designed by Claude Whalen and is published by Tiny Battle Publishing. Well, I just got back from vacation in Florida and this was waiting on me and I'm real excited because this is a pre-order up right now and will be available, I believe, the second week of August. So if you are interested in this series, and this is going to be the second entry in the Shattered Union series of the American Civil War battles. These combine smaller battles used by the Blind Sword system with the card system used in the Black Swan system. So if you're a fan of Herm Lutman's system, you're definitely going to want to check this one out and get your pre-order in. So let's take a look at the back of the box and see what this game's all about. On June 8th and 9th of 1862, Stonewall Jackson turned on his pursuers, fought and defeated them at Cross Keys and Port Republic. Having fulfilled his mission in the valley, Jackson marched off towards Richmond and the rest of Lee's army. And you can see an example of the map, the counters that are going to be in the game, as well as the cards here. And the components, we get two 22 by 17 inch maps, 189 counters, 44 cards, two player aids, one series rulebook, one game module rulebook, and five six-sided dice. The game is for two players. Playing time is two hours, and it is for ages nine and up. So let's take a look inside and see what we get. All right, we get our deck of cards, pack of dice, A series rule book, module rules, our counters, player aid, and our two maps. So let's set up the maps and take a closer look at the game. Now we'll take a look at the maps that come with the game. This first one here is Port Republic and everything is very easy to understand, very legible. On the right hand side we have a turn track with nine turns and like I said you can easily tell all the different pieces of terrain out there. Mostly in the center we're going to have open terrain but then we do have some level changes over here. We're starting here with level one then we have two, three, and four. The level changes are very easy to note because as you get higher in elevation the terrain gets darker on top of the fact that we've got all these woods in with these terrain changes. You also have these gray contour lines which distinguish the elevation changes as well. Multiple farms dot the landscape, each with a unique name. We have some major and minor roads throughout the map and the Shenandoah River starts here at the bottom and goes all the way to the top of the map. The coaling is up at the top right of the map and north of that is where the Union forces will exit. Down here in Port Republic is where the wagon bridge will be used by Jackson to get his troops across. Great size map, not going to require a ton of space, but you still have a good deal of room for maneuver. And here's a look at the cross key map, and just like we saw at the Port Republic map, it's very easy to understand all the different types of train features out there, very easy to read everything, all the text and all that's on the map. We've got nine turns on this as well as the first one with Port Republic. We've got plenty of different level changes, lots of woods throughout, and we've got major roads as well as a whole bunch of farms that are sprinkled throughout the map. The Confederate entry location is down here at the bottom right and the Union entry is at the top left. So there's plenty of room to maneuver before you become engaged with the enemy. Next, we'll take a look at the player aid foldout that comes with the game. On the front, we have the combat results table, fire combat cohesion test type, close combat cohesion test type, brutal melee, defensive fire results, close combat advantages, weapon ranges, ammunition problems, and the fire combat advantages tables. On the inside of the foldout, we have a detailed sequence of play, listing out all the different steps that you'll be taking and their associated instructions. Next, we'll take a look at a few examples of the activation and event cards that come with the game. On the right-hand side, we have a Fremont and Yule card. These are going to be unit activation cards. These other cards here are going to be different events that are going to take place. Command Confusion, Murderous Follies, Rally Around the Flag, For Dixie, Harassing Fire, Tactical Initiative. You'll see that Rally Around the Flag and for Dixie are the same types of cards for either side, and each of them is going to give different advantages when they're brought to bear. For example, Murderous Follies, Fire Combat. After Fire Combat, dice are rolled. Increase the result by two categories. Example from T to a C. If at least one of the firing Union units has a CR of four or more. If not, increase the result by only one category. It could also be used for defensive fire. Before Close Combat, dice are rolled. 
Apply one additional defender advantage shift for any close combat with defending Union units. Here's another interesting one, Tactical Initiative. Select a Rebel Brigade, activate up to two adjacent units in that brigade with any one order. Or you can select a Rebel unit and activate that unit with any one order. So that guy right there is both powerful and pretty flexible. And there are two other cards that can come into play as well, Friction of War or Fog of War. Friction of War, discard the next drawn activation card without it having any effect. Fog of War, any player rolls the red and white dice and applies the result indicated below. There are six different results, and the bottom two include losing generals for either the Union or Rebel side. Next, we'll take a look at the counters that come with the game. And one thing I didn't mention when we're looking at the maps I'm going to mention here for those who are fans of the series. Each hex in this game is 300 yards, and each strength point equals 100 men. In this system, the hex sizes can vary up to 500 yards, and strength points can vary from 50 to 200 men, and then artillery can be one or two cannon. In this game, it is one cannon, just so that way you know what the values are for this game. On this first sheet, we have the Union forces, as well as some administrative counters at the bottom. The anatomy of the counters is pretty straightforward. The unit banner at the top tells you what brigade it belongs to. The two-letter code at the top right tells you the formation's commanding general. And then at the bottom left, that is a strength point. And at the bottom right, that red number is the unit cohesion value. On the next sheet, we have the Confederate forces and some more administrative counters. And on the third and final counter sheet are the remaining administrative counters for use in the game. Next, we'll take a look at the Shattered Union series rulebook. And this is a 15-page full color rule book. Inside of the front cover, we have a breakdown of the rules index in alphabetical order, along with their associated page numbers. Start off with the introduction to the series, game components, explaining to you how to understand all the counters. Then we have the sequence of play on page four, game turn marker, command decision phase, held formation, activation CIC card phase, activation phase. This is how you're going to be using your cards, which we've already looked at. And we have plenty of text examples and important call outs throughout the rules and some illustrated examples as well. Get into the fire combat steps, movement step, close combat step, end phase, skedaddle. Still one of my favorite terms used for retreating. Broken units, regroup, victory determination, and then we are at the back of the series rules. And lastly, we'll take a look at the game-specific rules for Conquering the Valley. This is a 12-page full-color rulebook. Inside the front cover, we get an introduction to the game. Then we have the game component breakdown. And we get into the command decision phase, activation phase, fire combat movement, close combat, and victory determination before we get into the scenarios. Remember, we've already looked at the series rules, and those are going to be the same throughout all the games. But each game is going to have changes to those rules. And that's why all these rule sections are a lot smaller because they're going to tell you what is going to be different compared to the series rules. Then we get into our scenarios. Ewell does his job, historic cross keys. It's going to give you a breakdown of the order of battle, different aspects of each of the game turns. If there's game turn one, two, and three, if there's any changes or if there are any reinforcement units, victory point locations. Then we get into scenario two, Jackson attacks, historic Fort Republic. Same thing. Scenario three, Campbell burns the bridge, cross keys what if scenario. Then the fourth scenario is two days in June, both the cross keys and the Port Republic combine together into a mini campaign. Then we have some design notes from Claude Whalen. And then on the back of the rules, we have the index. And that is a look at everything you get inside of Conquering the Valley, Cross Keys and Port Republic. This is a game designed by Claude Whalen and it's published by Tiny Battle Publishing. Well, like I said at the beginning of the video, this is coming out next week, so if you want to get your pre-order in, do so now. It will be shipping next week. This is the next in the Shattered Union series. I believe there are going to be four planned games on this, including a Gettysburg game. This system here, the Shattered Union series, is basically meshing both the Blind Swords and Black Swan system into a... Very simple, easy to play system, but still gives you a compelling, engaging experience. And I think that's really cool. Claude knows the system real well. He's done Kernstown and Thunder at Dawn, which are the Blind Sword system. And now with this new Shattered Union series, mixing the two together, I think, is just going to be great for American Civil War gamers. 
because this is a very streamlined system to play where you can get a lot of units on a table and not have to play for hours and hours and hours. So I think that's really fantastic. Plus the fact that it's covering little known battles a lot of times that are not in a lot of commercial games. So that's another aspect that's really cool. A lot of games will get overlooked, or I should say a lot of battles will get overlooked because they're not historically sexy. I mean, I love Stalingrad, and there's a million Stalingrad games. Gettysburg is the lead game when it comes to the ACW. So it's neat to see these small battles get their due as well using this system. And you know it's a solid system when it comes from the mind of Herm Lutman. So if you're an ACW fan, definitely check this one out. Like I said, on pre-order, start shipping next week so don't miss out. So I'm looking forward to getting this one on the table and checking it out. Well, I hope that helps you guys out if you'd be curious about this one. If you have any comments or questions, post them down below. Thanks for tuning in, guys. See you next time.